All right, now we're on to the second half of our program. And in this half, I have some uh, tunes I'm gonna play, but I also have some stories that are attached to these tunes. So the, the first one, the first uh, tune that I wanna play for you is Lily Bolero. And um, the, the story that goes with this is that um, for about 15 years, I was musical director of the New York Christmas Revels. And the Revels performed at Symphony Space um, in December for four or five performances. And each year we had a different cultural theme, like we had an Irish Revels or a French Revels or a Scandinavian Revels, all different kinds. And in 2000, we did a Victorian Revels. So at the same time that we were doing our Victorian Revels show, Garrison Keeler was performing at Town Hall. And on the weekend that we were doing our show, he was also doing a Victorian theme. So his people were madly on, on the internet looking for acts to have in their Victorian themed show and they came across us. So uh, he booked us to be in the show. So what we did was this. We uh, did our Saturday afternoon. Well, no, no, we went for a dress rehearsal Saturday morning. Me, the Greenwich Morris men and the whole chorus. We went for a dress rehearsal. Then we went to Symphony Space. We did our afternoon performance. And then we, when we finished that performance, we got on the subway in our full Victorian regalia and went down to Town Hall and uh, performed with Garrison on the Prairie Home Companion. All right. So first, uh, David Jones sang Miss Houlihan's Christmas Cake, which is just a, such a fun song. You should look that up. And the chorus sang a, a choral number called, um, I think it was either called Evergreen or Greenwood or something like that. Um, and then we had the Greenwich Morris men dancing. Now the Greenwich Morris men, uh, we had decided to do Lily Bolero because the chorus could sing the second time through because there's words to it. But the Greenwich Morris men are hitting sticks and everything, right? So Garrison Keeler said, oh yes, I've seen Morris men. You know, I think they're really interesting and whatever. And Paul Friedman turned to Garrison and said, yes, Central Park, Bethesda Fountain, Easter Sunday, you were in a boat. <laughs> And Karis, <laughs> he turned to the audience and he said, this man knows everything about my life. <laughs> dance a Belgian dance caller named Philippe Callens and for many many years Philippe um, would he also wrote many many dances so Philippe would travel to the United States like a whole bunch he'd come here lead workshops weekends everything go back to Belgium do his job and come back so he's going back and forth all the time so at an auction here in New York um, uh, there was a gold lame woman's jacket that was at auction and both Philippe and my husband, David, wanted this jacket. So I, I know Glor uh, Dorothy is getting the jacket ready, so you can see the jacket. Uh, here it's coming up. Uh, anyway, so both Philippe and uh, there's the jacket. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so there's Philippe also. So you can understand why both Philippe and David wanted this jacket, because it was just so amazing. Anyway, so... Uh, so they shared the jacket. That's what they decided to do. So Philippe would come to New York. He would uh, wear the jackets here or whatever. And then he'd take it back to Belgium with him and he'd wear it in Belgium. Then he'd bring it back and then David would keep it and David would wear it to dances and stuff. And so this jacket went back and forth between New York and Belgium. So finally, um, in uh, 2013, um, I went to uh, Belgium. He, uh, Philippe brought me over to play a dance weekend uh, at Mala, Belgium with um, Andrew Shaw 
And at that point, he had decided that coming back and forth, it was just getting too crazy for him. So he asked if he could keep the jacket for good. And we said, of course, yes. So we took the jacket back to Philippe. So I'm sure he still has it. So um, the reason I think of Philippe is because um, there's a tune called The Red Star Line written by Kathy Talvity. And it's written to a dance called Ottoman Amherst. And I just think it's just so beautiful. And every time I think of this tune, I always think of Philippe and that gold jacket. Western Massachusetts, there is a place called Pinewoods Camp. And country dancers go to Pinewoods Camp every summer to dance, to play music, to eat great food, to swim in Long Pond and Round Pond, and just have a totally immersive week of music and dancing. It's right, it's right outside of Plymouth, Massachusetts. So one summer, um, I was there with David, and after we were at Pinewoods Camp, we spent a couple of days in New Hampshire at Newfound Lake. And I was so full of music and dancing that I wrote this tune called Newfound Lake Waltz. So Sharon Green, who I mentioned in the first half, um, heard my tune and she was inspired by it to write a, a, a dance to it that's also in the Green Barnes book called Newfound Home. So here is Newfound Waltz. And why, who had been dancing, the organization had been dancing at Metropolitan Dwayne Hall. It's now called a, a Church in the Village, but at that time we called it Dwayne Hall, actually. And in 2010, um, the church decided that they were going to renovate the, the dance floor, which was actually the basement gym, and they kicked us out. So CDNY scrambled to find new dance spaces. Now, CDNY had been dancing at this church for 59 years at that point. So you can imagine we were very firmly entrenched there. Um, so at, <laughs> in the hall, it was in a gym. And in the gym, there was a stage. Um, and on the stage, there was like this old white uh, grand piano that had been played 10 gazillion times. It was totally beat up, poor piano, but that's what we played. But there were all these cases with food and, and flyers and, and sound equipment and just all this stuff. There was even a refrigerator on the stage, right? It was just, <laughs> it really needed to be um, fixed up. So anyway, um, at the last dance that we did before we had to leave, I wrote this tune called Goodbye Dwayne Hall uh, and performed it on January 10th, uh, 2000 and, 
January 30th, 2010. You walk down the street to the church door. It used to be brown, now it's gray. You whiz past the guard who nods silently. I'll do that again. You whiz past the guard who nods silently. He's watching TV anyway. You run down the steps to the basement. You hear music starting to play. The room is quite bright and quite garish. You don your dance shoes and you say, Goodbye, Dwayne Hall. Goodbye, dear old friend, that is all. The lights are atrocious, they burn through your eyes. The dancing ferocious, sweat fills up the skies. And when you're dancing toward heaven, we rise. Goodbye, Dwayne Hall. The stage is a mess and chaotic. Musicians and stands everywhere. The sound is in cabinets next to the food and even a black frigid air. The kitchen has leftover biscuits. The sink is from 1902. There are hoops in the dance hall and lines on the floor and cold water in the bathrooms. Goodbye, Dwayne Hall. Goodbye, dear old friend, that is all. Maybe you've met your true love on the floor. Or maybe there's someone whose face you abhor. We all think of people who've graced this dance floor. Goodbye, Dwayne Hall. So this is our last chance to dance here. For 59 years been our home. No music or dancing will resound in the our memory soon will be gone. As you pick your partner for the last dance and run to the full center spot, a bittersweet memory will take hold of you. The dancing will live on. Fondly, you're never a bore, and in our new dance hall, when we take hands for, we'll think, goodbye, Dwayne Hall, goodbye, Dwayne There's a video of that recording of that performance somewhere. We're still looking for it. Anyway, it was a very sad, sad day, which you can well enough imagine for CDNY and all the dancers. We really thought we were never coming back. But miracles happen, and we did come back. So three years later, um, in 2013, we came back to CDNY, to Duane Hall, and were welcomed back with open arms and have actually been dancing there ever since. Uh, so we have a video of, um, of um, Barberini's tambourine at this dance, this first dance when we did back. And the thing about this video is that um, uh, we're also playing a brand new piano, a new upright piano that we had purchased from Yamaha. So it was also a cel celebration of this piano. So in this recording, you will see... Um, Wayne Hankin playing ocarina and recorders, Paul Friedman on fiddle, me on the piano, and Paul Ross is calling the dance. So please enjoy Barberini's Tambourine from 2013.
Sorry we couldn't go on further. There's a whole bunch of more times through the dance. But anyway, just give you a flavor of uh, that wonderful celebratory evening that we had with our new piano and our new hall and all was well with the world. <laughs> so uh, what's next? Oh, so I have another Pinewoods story. So um, for many years, I went to Pinewoods to American Week. But uh, this one year, David said to me, David, my husband said, Oh, I want to go to English American Week. Now, I'd never been to English American Week, and I didn't really know that much about English dancing. I hadn't danced very much, but he said, no, 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 we have to go. So we go up to Pinewoods, and we um, go to the dance. We go to the, um, the dining hall for dinner on the first night that we got there. And we walk in, and all I see in the dining hall are old people, like people in their 60s. Or, or their 70s. Like, I mean, I'm talking about ancient people, gray hair, white hair. Oh my God. I was so upset. I was like, David, there's all these old people here. Oh God, this is just going to be a terrible, terrible week dancing. Oh my gosh. He said, no, 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 don't worry. Everything will be okay. So I was like, right. So anyway, we had dinner and we went back to our cabin and changed clothes. And we went to the dance hall to C Sharp to the first evening dance. And they were playing Orleans Baffled. I will never forget Orleans Baffled. And on the dance floor were all of these old people dancing up a storm, flying all over the place, smiling and laughing and just tearing it up. So I knew from then on the week would be a great success. And it was. So great. All right. So um, I was thinking about, you know, how you have like your favorite dance partner. You love every time that you just loved dancing with this one person. And sometimes it even goes further than that, that you actually have a dance that sits in your memory for a long time that was your actual favorite dance. And for me, that dance happened at General Theological Seminary. So um, David and Sharon Green, used, David worked at General Theological Seminary for many, many, many years. And so CDNY reaped the benefits of their living there because we would often have dances at their beautiful hall. It was this brown wood, high ceilings, like Tudor style, great sound. It was just awesome. So once a year, there was an event called the Yuletide Cotillion. And every year, Bare Necessities, the amazing band from Boston area, came and played for Yuletide Cotillion. And everybody would get dressed up and look beautiful and all sparkly and everything, and we would dance. So my favorite dance was at this particular Yuletide Cotillion, and my dance was with Susan St. Germain. So Susan and I were dancing Knives and Forks, which I'll play for you in a second. But there was something about, like, like when you get into the groove with somebody and with your dance partner and the whole dance, it's just like the two of you sort of just floating on the dance floor together. That was me and Susan. And there's this one moment in um, Knives and Forks where the, the you and your partner like come together and then you come together again. And I, I just, I, I don't know, I just have that such strong memory of that. It was just such a beautiful, beautiful dance. So Susan, if you're on this, I hope you, maybe you remember that too. I don't know.
So we have one more video for you. And this video is of Paul and me playing Speed the Plow. And the reason I wanted to do this is because um, every time Beverly Francis would call a dance, she all, and if Paul and I were both playing for the dance, she always um, programmed Speed the Plow because she just loved the way uh, Paul played this tune. So here we are with Speed the Plow. Hi everybody, I'm here with Paul Friedman. Hi. And we're gonna play Speed the Plow. And this is dedicated to Beverly Francis. see why Beverly loved that tune, right? <laughs> um, anyway, we're actually at the end of my program. I didn't realize it would go so quickly, but there you go. Uh, so I wanted to leave you all with a beautiful tune called Peace Be With You. And I think in these times and with everything going on, I think that we can all have a little peace be with you. So please enjoy this beautiful tune. Thank oh, you. Cynthia. Thank you all. What a lovely collection of tunes and stories, Cynthia. I, I personally, I, I felt like I was, it was a nice trip down memory lane. And I, I actually feel my heart beat like slower, just um, <laughs> relaxing as, as if we were at a dance.